Yeah. <laughs> that, that flight's good too. <laughs> What's happening, man? <laughs> I haven't hit two balls like that in my life. What's up guys, it's Tony with 4Money. Welcome to this episode of Tips with Taylor. Today we are gonna learn how to use our hips to generate power. Let's do it. So one thing that I've learned from watching Taylor and playing with him is that he uses his hips very much to generate power. Now my tendency when I play golf is well, I grew up playing baseball. So I think that I've got to move into the ball. And Taylor has given me some tips before about swaying too much. And when I watch Taylor swing, he does a lot of hip rotation. So let's let Taylor give us some instruction on how to use our hips to generate power. And just to put it really simply is, Right, if you were gonna, if you're gonna take a ball, and you're gonna try and throw it as far as you could, right? The first okay. thing you do is you step, and your hips lead, right? The, everything's okay. kind of behind you, so that's kind of the the same thought process as in the golf swing, right? So we're okay. So that step forward is putting that weight toward that front foot, okay. getting that momentum forward, and then everything is just kind of twisting around itself, and all the force ends up at the end of the club head. So that's okay. kind of what you're trying to maximize. Okay, so like a very athletic motion. Yes. Okay. Because if you were to try and hit a golf ball, you know, with no hips, it's like... Okay, I can see your, your hips just barely turned past, you know, center. Yeah, everything should kind of just fall into place. And that's kind of what I kind of search for. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm watching his hips specifically, and it's like, he's like on a swivel. Like, if I were to just put a line on his spine and watch it, it's just going around that. Okay, so my tendency when I hit balls is, like I said a little while ago, is I want to, my, in my head, I gotta generate power, so I have to lean into it. Like I'm thinking I've gotta do this motion, but what is that causing in the swing by moving too far forward? So too far forward could give you a couple things. Uh, if you have too much lag and you're too far forward, you're gonna kind of bottom out. Oh, on top of it, right? So you're gonna you're gonna hit a really thin shot, right? Because okay. you're so far ahead of it. I see. Um, so I I'm, have. So I'm moving forward, and the club head is gonna hit the ball like. Yeah, because now you're. So if this the swing path's on an arc, right? So if this is where the club meets the ground. Okay. And we're swinging past that. Okay. If I move my weight forward, now that position where it's gonna hit oh, the ground okay. is forward, right? But if you keep going forward, it's moved all the way up here and the club's gonna be too high in the air. I see, so the bottom of the swing is now pushed in front of the ball too far forward. Yeah. Okay. Because you want it to be in front, right? You want sure. that, that forward, uh, you know, ball then divot. Right, so if the ball's here, you want the divot maybe starting there Yeah, or right so. after the ball. But if I keep swinging, maybe my bottom is here. Yeah, I so see. then now you're gonna have to make compensation moves to fix that. Maybe extend my arms or something. Yeah, cast the club out. Oh, which casting, yeah. okay. I'm gonna do what feels right to me, which is probably sway, mm -hmm. and tell me how I can I can fix that. Okay. Okay, terrible shot, obviously, <laughs> but what did my hips do in that swing? So hip swing, when you came back, didn't actually look bad. I mean, yeah, there was some, there was some horizontal movement off the ball, but then you'd kind of turned into it. Okay. But after that, it was just kind of, your just hips kind of just went this way. Okay, my hips went this way and not this way. Yeah, they didn't really turn a lot. Okay. Uh, so you do use your hips coming down, which is good to see, okay. right? But I'd want to see you rotate them more this way and not okay. so much that way. I see. So when you were going to the top, you know, I saw you kind of come off the ball a little bit. So there are some tour players that actually do that, that come off the ball a little bit. Okay. Uh, but most of them don't come off that much, right? You want to just see maybe a little bit of a bump and then turn. You were kind of already over here. Okay. And then and got then to the turned. D turn. And then as a result of you going back that far, okay. you have to compensate and go this way. So I your see. compensation was really, really big in the sway, right? Your hips were way out ahead of you. And now you got either got to cast it to make up okay. or come over the top, get steep with it. Okay. Um, and my casting results in a, in a shank. So what I'd want to see is instead of you kind of swaying this way, I'd want to see you kind of sh make that shift still, but okay. almost feel like there's a brick wall here and just kind of okay. stand up off that foot, push up.
So is there any sort of like a alignment stick drill that we could do that will help me not sway too far off the ball during my downswing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so just take an alignment stick. And I've, again, I've been guilty of maybe swaying a little too much. I, okay. As a player, I, I use a lot of legs. Uh, I have a lot of leg drive, okay. which is just unique to me. Okay. Uh, so sometimes I'll, the drill that I do and the drill that you should do is just you kind of take a stick and you just put it just outside that lead foot. Okay. Right? And essentially, I don't want to hit it. I'm just okay. trying to feel like I don't bump that stick. And that's kind of my goal. I see. So you're still having a slight press forward, but more rotation. And I noticed you didn't touch that stick at all. Yeah. So had I used that stick when I was swinging, I probably would have just yeah, you'd have bumped right into it. And hopefully you could feel that, right? And that right. that kind of gives you the the response you're looking for. Okay. It's like if I'm doing it right, I'm not going to hit it. So as long as I'm pressing and turning, we're going to be good to go. Okay. All right. Let me let me try that. We're just trying to feel that weight turn around your body. So you can here. drill it a little bit. Feel it. Feel it. Yeah, I feel like I want to touch it. Yeah, you want to my, touch my, it. I feel naturally like I'm going to bump it. Okay, so here, here. Yeah, that's... And it's an overcompensation, right? I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be that extreme. Right. But we're still looking just for that rotation. So just really soft, easy swing, maybe half swing. Beautiful. Okay, it, that, that is a, it's a different feeling. Yeah. Because I'm telling myself, don't move off the ball. Don't mm -hmm. move off the ball rotate and it's not that this thing's gonna hurt me but i know it's there yeah right okay that's, that's and just subconsciously your mind will make those changes and eventually you know if you do that drill enough okay let's then see. those changes work their way into your golf swing as All long right. as you're conscious of them i'm gonna pretend the stick is there okay that is different man wow dude <laughs> that's that, a nice draw that's a difference man <laughs> that's, i don't know how it looked on camera but i did feel in my head that i was don't move forward, mm -hmm. don't move forward. And it was, okay, all right, that's the difference, man. Subconsciously, you can still see that stick and feel it there, right? Yeah. But when you're when you're hitting the ball, you know, you're trying to make these changes, you realize that the changes you make are really subtle. Right. Right, and that subtleness is what really impacts the golf swing. It's so finite and so precise that those changes end up big results. Right, no, that was the, probably the highest draw I've hit with my pitching wedge. Yeah. Like, and most of our balls are low flighted and maybe my low flight comes from too much forward press and I, I de -loft it a bit. Yeah. And maybe by staying with the true angle of the, of the club, the ball flight was higher. Maybe somebody who's less flexible can't do a full hip rotation. That's true. So, yeah. so what can somebody with less flexibility do without swaying off the ball? Just don't turn as far. I mean, if you're not that flexible, you really don't have to. If you look at somebody like Tony Fino, right? How far back does he really turn? Not much. Not far, right? His golf swing is full swings like right here. Yeah, same with John Rahm. Yeah, they're very short swing, right there. swinging guys, but then and you have guys like Rory who, you know, their shoulder turn is, you know, 110 degrees, which is nuts. So yeah. You, know, you don't have to be super flexible. You know, if you can't go all the way back, somebody like Rory, you don't have to. You can go back to right here. As long as okay. you just keep everything together, mm -hmm. you know, don't sway if you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that flight's good too. <laughs> What's happening, man? <laughs> I haven't hit two balls like that in my life. Okay, so yeah, because on my downswing, I'm thinking, don't press forward, don't press forward. Yeah, and, the and there's going to be a natural press forward, right? Exactly. That's the funny thing is, is like you are, you're still pressing forward uh -huh. more than you think you are, mm -hmm. but that rotation is coming in, and that's affecting the club head just enough to hit it perfectly. Just trying to keep things as simple as possible, right? Because if we have a target, we're trying to hit that target. So if I don't want to sway off the ball, I'm still going to be thinking about that wall in front of me. That's the, okay. that's how I visualize it, and that's the best thing that works for me. Okay. So I'm going to visualize that wall next to me and hopefully just hit a good shot. Yeah, yeah. I can picture if there was a wall there, you, you would not hit it. Maybe your club would, Yeah. Um, but your hips and your shoulders, nothing is making contact with that wall. Yeah. You're just making sure that you turn and the wall's there. Mm -hmm. Get to the top. 
and the first move that starts down is really in your hips. You know, it's, it starts down low. Yeah. So try and keep the golf swing as simple as possible, right? I mean, okay. it's not necessarily natural, but the way you come down is natural. If you load up, you're ready to thro basically throw a ball. Right. So that's all we kind of want to do. We just kind of want to throw the ball, don't hit the wall next to me. Yeah. And then we end up with something like that. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so just a little recap of what we learned today. Keep it a very athletic motion, right? The hips naturally do not move left to right to do anything athletic, right? To generate power, it's around your hip, around your hip. Keep your spine from not swaying too much yep. off-centered. And I guess when I get it from Taylor, is that that trail hip feels like it's coming back, not back away from the ball, you know, if that wall was there, you don't want to move too far off that. Yeah. And then on the downswing, the same thing. You don't want to sway too far forward. You want to keep the weight on the front leg, mm -hmm. right? But you want to feel like you're rotating and you're not going to hit that yep. wall that's there. So exactly. that pretty much sum it up. That's right. I would say those two shots that I hit with the little tips that he gave me are probably the highest draws I've ever hit. <laughs> he was watching me hit ball before we started. And yeah, low shanks all over the place. That was not intentional. I used what Taylor told me about rotating around my spine, not moving too far forward, and it worked pretty good. All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode. See you next time.